in a world where Microsoft virtualization is still considered to be the underdog by some. The Hyper-V Amigos enlighten the IT crowds on how they could very well be mistaken. Hi Didier. Uh, hi Didier, how are you? I'm fine. A bit tired, but fine. Yeah, we, we are doing another Hyper-V Amigo showcast and this time it's about a great feature in Windows Server 2016. And um, we were inspired for this Hyper-V Amigo showcast by our friends from Weem, right? We were, indeed. Yeah, we both are Weem Vanguards. This is a similar program than the MVP award, and uh, uh, we do a little bit stuff for Weem there and play around with it. And the question is, does ReFS help, the new file system help, with as a backup target? Well, if you if you leverage the new capabilities of REFS, it certainly does, yes. Yeah, and uh, this was the question, right? And, that was the question. Yeah, and we will now show our conclusions about that. Well, we we will we will play with REFS and see what 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 makes a good backup target. Okay. But it's 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 early days yet, and I think the the value will show when you start doing backups Good, for over yeah. longer periods to our targets yeah. because what we're trying to figure out right here is how do we create a very performant but very affordable backup target okay so yeah. so i will i will before we go directly to the machine i try to show here what the setup is and what the the theory is right yeah. so you see here i have in the moment one of these machines uh, that has four SSDs, these are the four, uh, four disks here, and eight HDDs. So the okay. SSDs are 800 gigs and the, the HDDs are four terabyte. And we tried to test this scenario with ReFS and the hybrid disk. We have the possibility to create a virtual disk in storage spaces and a part of the virtual disk is a mirror here and the rest is double parity yeah and in mm -hmm. our scenario we want to put the mirror tier in uh, on the ssds and the double parity tier on the hdds so uh, we then try to use refs and try to figure out if this scenario this, this is well uh, this is valid for storage spaces direct the great software we we did our last Hyper-V Amigo uh, showcast about, uh, but now we try this with a single node. We have only one node, and yeah. looking at this scenario, if it also works with um, on a single machine. Yeah, the, the logic here being is that SSD is great, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's not a problem, but for a backup target for a lot of environments, it might not be the most cost-effective or the best choice. So you might want to avoid clustering and the 10, uh, the 10 or the 40 gigabit networking for the for the back end of a storage based yeah. direct deployment. It's a lot it's a lot more involved. Let's put it this way. And a lot of people are just leveraging uh, one or multiple standalone uh, backup targets. And then the question becomes: Hey, our EFS is so nice, and Veeam has this nice information about what they do to leverage our EFS. How can we leverage this in a more, let's say, SME market mm -hmm. that might not be willing to invest in an S2D to have that uh, capability. So, mm -hmm. and that, then, then come, then the, the question pops up: Is this even possible, right? And that's what Veeam came to you and asked: Hey, do no, you have some us. hardware lying around? Yeah, to, no, us, to us, us. We were asked because we are a little bit knowledge, uh, known about this that we do stuff with these uh, with these technologies and they ask uh, oh uh, wouldn't wouldn't it be nice to to use refs with uh, with uh, on it's it's like the the real time tiering right and yeah, we played a little bit around and we have some findings there we will show you we will show uh, that in the showcast but to be honest we don't know if it's really a supported scenario yes uh that's 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 information we need to get from Microsoft. Yeah. But in the end, I at this moment I do not see 
a technical reason why this shouldn't be supported. Okay, so uh, let's dive into the demo. So uh, we will switch to the screen. Um, we are here on one of on the machine uh, we showed already, and uh, to to show it, we use a little bit of PowerShell. Oh, let me see here. Let's show the disks that are in the system. So we see here we have some disk with 745 gigabytes that are four. These are the SSDs. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 3.6 terabyte disks. These are the HDDs, right? So that's a nice system. So we will get these in this disk variable and we, we leverage PowerShell to create the volumes we need and do all the copy stuff. So first, let's create a storage pool. I do that with this nice PowerShell line. I, I say cre a new storage pool, use the disks that can be pooled. The name of the pool would be S2D pool uh, and we do that. So basically that's all your disks, right? All the disks, uh, not yeah. not the OS disks that we, yeah, yeah but, but the pool all the other ones, disks. yeah, okay. where get where can pool was true. Yeah. So now we have our pool, and we try to do this uh, mirror tier thing and uh, double parity thing. If we create a storage basis direct scenario, there is this nice, um, I think, create dash cluster S two D. It will do all the work. It will create a pool, put every disk in it, finds finds out which are the fastest disks and uh, leverage yeah. them as caching devices. And if there are SSDs and HDD, he will it will create a performance tier and a capacity tier. But yeah. we have no S2D here, so we have to do it on our own. So this this PowerShell command will create a storage tier with the name performance. It will take all SSDs that are in the storage pool with a friendly name S2D pool, and yeah. we will create our performance tier as mirror and as a three-way mirror. So let's do okay. that. That makes sense. So basically, the mirror is consisting out of all our four SSDs, mm -hmm. and, and then we, the capacity we do a tier. Mirror. And why do we do a three-way mirror? Because we like data protection, right? Ah, uh, yeah. We could yeah, go yeah, with yeah. a two-way mirror. We have a single box, so we would have yeah. more capacity. But we try to mimic the the setup of the storage basis direct stuff. Okay. So it would be another test if we can do only a two-way mirror here, you know, to have more SSD capacity for for our performance. And then sure. we do our capacity tier, all the HDDs, the same yes. pool. We do parity and then we do double parity. I've I've done that already. And now we create, um, uh, let's do that, a volume that is called ReFS NIB volume. NIB is for non-file integrity. Yeah, okay. I don't know what, what I mean with a B. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so integrity then, bits flip. Oh, oh maybe that, maybe oh, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so let's create a new volume. It made sense some time ago. Right? It's some time ago, yeah. <laughs> it's still so, it's not man in black anyway. Yeah. So, no. so what we do, we we take a part of the performance tier and from the capacity tier, 100 gigabyte from the SSD tier, the performance tier, and one terabyte from the uh, parity or the capacity tier. We take the ReFS file system, uh, allocate the drive letter R, and we want to have 64 kilobyte block size in the volume. And this is the standard value, but we, we put it here. There will be a write back cache of one gigabyte on the SSDs. Okay. So, and uh, we want to do the volume without file integrity. This is, I think, the standard, but we will format the volume and set the set integrity stream to false. Yeah. Okay. So basically, we format the volume again. Yeah. This is one way to set the integrity, uh, integrity uh, file integrity to no file integrity, uh, yeah. and it's the default behavior. But we we we've done it explicitly. So then we do the same stuff with another volume, but this one has the file integrity turned on. You see it here set. 
integrity streams to true. Okay. So now we have our new. It's now Q, right? Yeah. It's Q, yeah. Uh, it's our new we, one with greater yeah. capacity. Yeah. Okay. And then Performance. we create an NTFS yeah. volume, right? Yep. Cool. Also. Of course. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Oh. I know. NTFS as a comparison. That's, yeah. That makes sense. And we do the same. We we take we try to mimic the hybrid disk just for fun, and I I think it's not really supported, but uh, we don't know. Um, I don't know. They, they they you can do it, right? It works. It works. Yeah. There is. It works. <laughs> so and, we, and, and 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 it it does make sense that if this if if they say okay, this is a valid use case, why 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 wouldn't you leverage it? Okay. Because it makes sense not to have to use an STD to use the benefits of REFS, yeah. at, at least to me, right? Yeah. So we, we did the same 100 gig of the performance part and one terabyte of the capacity part. We formatted it with NTFS and we will use the drive letter N, and the rest is the same. So then we go into a performance monitor and we want to see some counters. Okay, the storage spaces. Yeah, and it were the storage spaces here, yes. right? So at first we look at the volume R. R is yes. without the uh, integrity streams. Yes. So it should be non-IB. Yes. So we take this is nice, two. right? You can you can actually see inside of your hybrid volume. And see the two tiers there, which is nice. Yeah. So here we have the two tiers. Uh, this is the capacity tier, where is mm -hmm. a lot of counters, and this is the performance tier. This is the SSD part, and this is a HDD part. Okay. So and now we prepared some measure commands. So we we have a RAM disk. So if I open File Explorer, we have prepared a RAM disk. It's it's. Uh, it's drive letter A, and there we have uh, some VHDXs, one okay. with 33 terabytes, and another one with 52 terabytes. We yeah, need some data to, to, cop to simulate our backup, right? Yeah, and, and basically we've put it in a, in a RAM disk to, to exclude any uh, delays or latencies or performance issues with the source. Right, so, RAM disk is so fast that it shouldn't be uh, a limiting factor in the exercise. Yeah. So uh, then we prepared some commands. We will use RoboCopy with the switch dash or, or uh, slash uh, J. It's for don't use uh, um, system RAM to 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 cache. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we can we can show that also with the task manager, right? Yeah, we will do go that. To, yeah. Gonna, so, yeah. We open Task Manager, and this is the used RAM by the RAM disk and the system. And usually, if you use um, File Explorer and copy something to a disk, and there is a lot of RAM, he will cache. And so you are copying into RAM, and you don't really see the performance of the device. So, yeah. um, so we we decided to use RoboCopy. It's not so effectful than uh, the the File Explorer. It's not not so nice, but we can switch off the caching in RAM. Yeah? So let's start with our first file. Uh, oh, um, we want to do all three of them. So let's try this. If it yeah. doesn't work, we will kill the R drive again, right? Okay, no worries. Let's so, kick it off. So here's our first test. Yeah. And we measure the time it takes. It is now copying the 33 yeah. gigabyte file. Okay. And what do we see, DJ? I'm I'm seeing that you are writing to the performance tier. Yes, we and, and we Yeah. Yeah, go on. So we see the the transfer bytes per second and we also see that that it's all it's all right, right? It's all right because these numbers match up. Yeah. And so we then, write 450, 440 megabytes per second to our SSDs. So this is nice. That's is a nice. that's a very decent speed. Yeah, and uh, our 33 gigabytes are already done 60 percent, right? Yep, it's going fast. It's and going. It's all into the performance tier. It's going very fast, and we prepared something else. We have an Excel table. Uh, uh, sorry for the German Excel. 
I didn't have the time to install an English one. And here we uh, we calculate the performance. So yes. we will so, uh, enter the second here, the second that measure command will measure. So and it's now can, almost done. Yeah. And then the next copy should kick off. Yeah. Here, here's the next copy. It's a bigger file. Yeah. So yeah, 77.4 was the timing for the first copy. Yeah. Here we take it 7, yeah. 7, 7, yeah. 7. 4. So 7, yeah. 7. 4. So we're was, still hitting the performance there still? Yeah. And we're still at 20%. Copying, yeah. Yeah. So we had 30 in and we're almost at 25% of 50. So we're, we've almost filled our performance there by half. Yeah. So we create to explain it. We created 100 gigabyte in the performance tier. Yeah, a bit a bit small to make sure that we see some uh, some things happen. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, the demo would be a bit boring. <laughs> yeah, and we have to wait a long time, <laughs> yeah. even with RAM disks and SSDs. If we, if we would fill it with, uh, if we had a performance tier of two terabytes, we would be wait, waiting copying a lots long time. of data. Yeah. So the theory is, uh, if the performance tier is used and it gets too full yeah right? it, it should put some data in the capacity tier right okay with yeah. the hybrid disk there should be a destaging of data and yeah. let's see what happens it's so it's going to happen almost i think we're now at 70 percent it should start soon yeah you're right yeah. if it doesn't then <laughs> something is weird <laughs> but it should. But it, it should. It should very soon. So we have 33 gigabytes and 52 gigabytes. Should it, so it should start, DDA. What's it happening start. here? You're not writing to the wrong disk, are you? No, I, we, you see the, <laughs> the data here, right? HR, yes. It's copying, it's copying. <laughs> and it's copying. And it's copying. And it's amazing. Excellent. No, so, now it's destaging, you see? Ah, yes. Yeah. Yes. It took it a while, to. and the the time it it took longer now, and now the 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 third copy process starts. Yep. So we see what do we see now? We see now I, yeah. a big write to the SSD still, but we all also see reading from the SSD tier. Yes. And writing to the HDD to the capacity tier, right? This is cool. Yeah. So this is actually T while we are copying. Explain it to you. Well, you're you're seeing tiering in action. So data from the from the high performance tier is being uh, read and written, offloaded actually to the capacity tier. Yeah. So the the idea here is that you can keep writing at a decent speed whilst the capacity tier is absorbing the 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 overflow of data that you can't store there anymore. Yeah. So this is this is this is fun because you you don't often get to see data tiering in action. That's right. <laughs> uh, like, like this. Sorry, sorry now, for that. It's no, don't worry. Now, of course, you, you're gonna you're gonna take a bit of a performance hit, right? As this happens, because uh, the, the the balance the balance should be that your 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 tier that you use to to drop your your backups or whatever you you are putting in the in the the first tier, that that one is big enough to take your hourly or daily delta or whatsoever. Uh, don't make it too small, but we didn't make it too big, so we had something to show. Yeah, basically. But you you should balance this out against your workload, and then you should have optimal performance while the capacity is there, and uh, to offload all the data that doesn't have to be in the in the in the primary in the first tier anymore. So yeah, so um, it's really the yeah. the real time tiering is really going on, and this this was. The ask that uh, Weem was asking us, and we didn't know, so we set it up, and uh, now we see it working. So this is slower, of course, because we are, yeah. we have to destage data. And <coughs> let's let's look at the measurement for the last disk. We have 125 point something. Yes. So we will enter it here. Oh, and perhaps, perhaps whilst you are typing this and we're waiting for the copy, we should explain why uh, the file integrity is on. Basically, the file integrity will detect if there is something wrong with the data. If you have something corrupt landing on a file, 
uh, the file system will will check this and yeah. log an event if something goes wrong. So uh, it also has some other, uh, let's say, effects on how data is written. It yeah. becomes more of a it streams it better. Let's put it that way. Yeah, but in the moment it's off. Did you? This is yeah. this is a volume where it's off uh, for the metadata. It's on, but uh, for the the payload, let's say it that way, our our so so, ba so basically this is like a, a normal file system yeah. that doesn't do integrity streams. Yeah. So we are nearly done with our first bunch of files, and then we will see, or we should see that the destaging is still happening, right? So Which makes sense, right? Which here. makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. We have, it's not much write going on to the performance tier anymore. There's no data yeah. coming, uh, coming from our RAMDAS because we don't use the buffering of the, of the operating yeah. system. But it's reading now with 167, yeah. 132, 35. And, and it's, it's writing, writing. Yeah, to the capacity disk. Yeah. This is nice. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's still destaging data um, so we assume there is more data in the performance tier now um, that that the that the system is comfortable with so he's still destaging some stuff off to the uh, capacity tier right but yeah but but basically we don't know what 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 will be left or will it be emptied completely that's something we don't know yet right yeah so I, I put in yeah. the number here it's uh, 202 seconds so it's it's getting slower you see that the file was smaller it was only 32 gigabytes but it took 202 seconds before that the 51 gigabyte file took nearly yeah. it's not really the half half but it's 60 percent of the time so we will we go down with our throughput yeah but I assume if the destaging goes on and in a backup scenario, you would backup for maybe four, five, six hours, whatever, and mm -hmm. then the system can destage. So there we will get free space in the SSD tier again, right? Yeah, and, and of course, you, you, you add some SSDs, you add some capacity in that uh, performance tier to get a good balance of what needs to land there. Yeah, and look at as the long view. As, yeah. Look, this seems to be the the, 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 the the parity, the calculation of the parity, maybe. Let's look at that in the next phase, right? Because okay. now the CPU is nearly, we, we nearly use, use nothing. Yeah? So let's, let's uh, do it again with, <coughs> with uh, file integrity streams on, right? Okay, let's do so that. So we have another volume, it's Q. It's, it's the same setup, some SSD space, some HDD space, and we start it. But for that, we have to get other counters. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. That's, we only got the ones for the yeah, non-integrity stream. So storage, storage spaces tier. Uh, yes, and we use the 50. integrity. Yes. yes. Okay, there we are. Okay. So we and have exactly the same, yeah? Same picture. It, the, the, the performance tier was empty, so now it's all heading for that performance tier. So the speed is still good. Looks looks good. Yeah, it looks very good. And the copy job is maybe using one core, and not a full core. Yeah, we need some CPU for that. Yeah, but, but it's it's one file and it's RoboCopy. So even yeah. if yeah, so that's normal. Yeah. Even if you were using multiple threads, there's only one file, I think. And I think. Sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so did you you started with uh, in the integrity streams now on this disk? Also, the, the payload uh, has integrity streams on and is protected, or the system will, will recognize if you call it bit rot, if some bit rot uh, takes place, right? Or, or if a file that you're copying doesn't arrive correctly, because that's, that's one of the, of the annoying things about uh, IT. A lot of people don't seem to realize that not all network cards and all, not all network drivers or firmware are created equally, and sometimes well, even if, if even if a TCP/IP is supposed to do checksumming, not always everything arrives on the other side correctly, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> and so what's unfortunately, the, unfortunately, yes. what's amazing is we have the, the same uh, the same 
amount of seconds for the for both uh, for both uh, VFS volumes. So we have seventy seven point four seconds. Could, could that could that mean that as long as you are using the performance tier, that the overhead of or is 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 yeah you know, buffered by it or or of course if you turn on integrity streams you get the different IO let's say uh, profile than you do if you don't have it so it might even be beneficial beneficial to certain types of workloads maybe I don't know be but uh, what I see it's the same it's the same time here huh? yeah, yeah. So okay I, let's, let's wait yeah what I didn't do I I didn't start all three of them so I had to hurry up a little bit I, I lost two yeah. to three seconds and I kicked off the the, the, the two others yeah, so it's okay. maybe not quite the same. We will see. Well, it's still going strong. Yeah, and Speed now we, is still very decent. Yeah, now this core is, uh, Robocop yeah. is using this core. It's allowed. It can, it, it can switch, yeah. It can switch. So yeah. we saw the destaging, I assume it was in the 90% range, 90-something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were worried that we can't show what, what we want. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be weird because we're, yeah. we have too much data to fit into the the performance tier, right? Yeah, yeah. So maybe and it's just a bit of a of a of a delay yeah. and, that we and, see. And we prepared this, so uh, this is not really. Uh, we we looked at it and uh, tried for some hours to to find a nice setup to show it. So well, it's not kicking in yet. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah it kicks in. in. Ninety nine something. Yeah, but now it kicks in perhaps because the file is done. Done has is finished copying. No, Whatever it, comes first, perhaps when it. Good when question. This... But before we show uh, a kick in earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So As let's... you can see uh, from our conversation here, and we we are sharing our own, uh, well, let's say, questions with you. Uh, this is not actually exactly documented, is it? <laughs> no, not really. So it has nearly the same timing as before. It's a little bit slower. No, it's a little bit faster. Oh, it's a little bit faster. It was a little bit faster, right? A little bit faster. The question yeah. is, is it is it going to stay that way, right? That would be interesting. Yeah, it is. So now we see the same stuff. It's writing mainly into the uh, uh, SSD tier, the performance tier, and it's reading from the SSDs and destaging into the HDDs. Here's only write going on. Yeah, and we, we assume go. that every I.O., did you uh, correct me, uh, but we assume that the I.O., the write I.O., is going to the performance tier, and the performance tier is destaging to the HDD, yeah, right. Now, yeah, that's that's an assumption we were making, as as that's how we 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 have been told that S two D works. Yeah. So you have other tiering systems where if if the perform if the high if the first tier the performance tier is full, in some in some storage environments, then they will start writing to the to the second tier. Yeah. Until until there is space free in the first tier, but in this case we we we're, we're working from the from the assumption that we're writing to the performance tier while destaging is going on. So it's a bit of a of a bucket overflow to another bucket uh, yeah. that we're seeing. Oh, well, at least that's what we think. Yeah. So now we. So, uh, if, so if Microsoft sees this and feels the urgent need to document this uh, <laughs> that would be kind of nice thank you <laughs> we would even uh, blog about it if they uh, tell us if we as our assumptions are correct or wrong of course yes would be nice so um uh let's finish this one and we we take the numbers and then we go to the N uh, ntfs volume okay and do the same stuff right yeah makes sense so we're at eighty percent. It's it's slowing down, of course, but it's still not too bad. Because oh. let's let's let, you have four SSDs in there. Yeah, four SSDs. And it's uh, it's a three-way mirror. We think so, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> so I so, so I mean, in the end, you are you are not. It's not like you're you you are writing to a a four SSD. Uh, stripe or so, read, read zero or whatever. Yeah, right? No, no, we uh, we have a three-way mirror. Yeah. There are four 800 gig SSDs. Yeah. So in total, it's 2.2, uh, 3.2 terabyte divided by three. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, it would be nice to to look if a two-way mirror is enough resiliency for us, because yeah. if if a disk fails uh, with with three-way mirror, we can uh, compensate a two-disk failure. 
with a two-way mirror, we only can compensate a one disk failure because the yeah. data is spread over all disk and all SSDs. So for, for, uh, for us, this is always a balance in one. What, what, it, what is the likelihood? So that's a statistic that, that a disk fails and that two disks fails within the same time before you can replace them. And normally we make the decision based also on how well is that ops team in that environment? If yeah. a disk fails and the op, op, ops team uh, is on, on site and they have spare disk lying on the cupboard, right? Cold spare, can they swap it out fast? If you know it's going to take them two or three days to get there or to even notice and, and do something or get a spare disk, you might want to build in a bit more resiliency. Yeah. So that's that's the the balance and the trade off yeah. you need to make. So our our third copy is done. We see the destaging still going on. He's he's doing two hundred, two hundred, one hundred seventy, yeah. uh, and we have a little bit of two hundred and four. Yeah, two hundred and four. I see the time there. Yeah, and okay. I already put it into the Excel table. And the nice Which... thing is, the seconds are exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> so I have well. the sum here. Uh, the the um, the second copy was a little bit slower without file integrity, but the third was a little bit faster, and okay. here the other way around. But uh, the seconds were nearly the same, so we have nearly the same speed in the with ReFS with file integrity and without, at yeah. least in our setup. So yeah. we could we could conclude that the over that the potential overhead you have. But the file integrity is offset by the fen by the benefits in in writing uh, it delivers. Yeah. So that's well. At least it's it, at least it shows that it's not going down tremendously or something. So it looks like uh, this is a valid from from this experiment. I'm hopeful that we can make a valid uh, backup target out of this. Yeah. So now uh, the destaging uh, is yeah. finished. Yeah. Now we can don't, go to the. Don't NDFS. forget. Yeah, don't forget to change out the uh, performance. Ah, you're uh, right, you're right, of course. <laughs> ah, wrong. Let's do this. And we go here. It was storage. Tier. Tier. Now we want the NTFS volume, right? Mm, disk 13, that is. So uh, here no, we are. 16, yep. Yeah. I take all three commands and yes, kick, it kick off. them off. There we go. So we have our copy. Copy is going fine. Yeah, we see we it, see the same, but we are not so fast, huh? We have yes, it's it's fast, but not that fast. It's like a hundred less. Yeah, maybe around oh, hundred megabyte megabyte per second uh, less than our ReFS. But the surprise is the 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 copy is going to the performance tier to the SSDs, right? With NTFS. With NTFS, so we have Rather. our hybrid disk, mirror part, parity part, mm -hmm. but we use the file system NTFS. So we see now all the writes in the moment are going to the NTFS, uh, to the performance tier, to the SSDs. Yeah. It is not as fast as ReFS. We can see that. Yeah. And we, we will see a number shortly here. That we can that we can put in our Excel uh, table. So let's see, 66. Yeah. So we've made them as equal as we could. So it's all on the same storage pool. They all leverage the same types of disks, right? And the same disks. It's yeah. spread over yeah. all this. Yeah. We haven't we haven't upset the 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 SSDs too much because they all, they all got a hundred gigs of that high performance here. So oh. So I give you my my things again. No, no, I still have it. And the so, video is back. So we had a little a, glitch in our software that we used. Little, little, little glitch, bit. little glitch. So uh, the, now I need to. <laughs> the first one is go, finished. I need to go back to the other monitor. Here we go. So we're good. Yeah. Do an action again. Yeah, the first file is finished. We are now copying the second one. It took 96.5 <laughs> seconds. Okay. And the and data is still going to our performance tier, right? Yes, at the same speed. So what was what, what was the difference with... Uh... I will put it here. It's okay. 300... 
436 megabytes per second and we had 419. That's and quite an, quite a difference, right? That's the difference, a serious yeah. one, yeah. yeah. So now we see the writing going still to the performance tier. It's only 100 gigs, so it could nearly take all three files because we have a 32 gig file. So let's see yeah. in our table. Yeah. We so, have, so, in total, we have 116 me megabytes or gigabytes. Yeah. Sorry, and our our SSD tier is 100 gigabytes. Mm. Let's see what's happening. What do you expect, Didi? I expect it to start gearing a bit, because let let's face it: if if Microsoft allows you to create a virtual disk on a storage pool mm -hmm. that has both uh, a capacity tier piece and a tier <laughs> and a performance <laughs> yeah. and a performance tier. Yeah. It would be kind of silly that it stops copying data the moment the performance tier fills up. Yeah. Right? I'm However, I do notice, uh, at least to me, it seems that it has stopped copying. No, it's still copying. 38, oh. 30. 84, 85. Okay. Oh, my, my screen wasn't refreshing properly. Okay. So some some, I mean, how how, how can you make a, a a a terabyte volume and then say, hey, we don't we 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 stop copying data into it when the performance tier tier is filled. So it has to start tearing some sometime. Okay. Otherwise, this would be a really silly setup. So now, which they allow, right? Yeah, but Didi, we we didn't have done this before. We are the the copy, the one copy is stopped, and now the next one is starting. So okay. you see here, he's copying yeah. the next file. Yes. So let him copy. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. And I think the performance is nearly the same. It's three hundred thirty. Yeah. Uh, one one fifty four. Yeah, 154 uh, seconds, yeah. So we yeah, have the same it, performance. And it, and it is copying, and it keeps copying, yeah. and it's still going to the performance tier. Yeah, and I will do something. I will add a fourth copy. Oh, what are you seeing now? Oh, no, it's uh, actually, it's, it's tearing, right? Is it still copying that third file? Yeah. Yes. Five six. And yes, but it's it's, it's steering. Not, it's going. It's everything all, is going to the to the uh, capacity. capacity. Hey, that's that's different than with RVFS. Yeah, it is. So now we yes. every data is going to the capacity tier, and nearly nothing to the performance tier. So we have no real time tiering here, right? This this. This is suspiciously like some of the sands I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there any tearing happening actually? He's not reading much. Is no, he? it's no tear. I, I, I don't see no. tearing. Uh, so, no. I don't see the online tearing. That is reading no. data from the performance tier and putting it in the capacity tier. Maybe, maybe when, when this file, you haven't started that fourth one yet. No, I you? haven't. Should I? Kate. No, 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 don't. But I, I want to see if this file is copied, if that triggers the tearing. Or not? I don't so either so. the tearing is is triggered by the f apparently the tearing is not triggered by the fact that the performance tier is full, but perhaps when the, when the I/O stops, I don't know. Just let's wait. We are at eighty-six percent. Pure speculation, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least we wanted to show ReFS is working at as we think. Yeah. With NTFS, it's even it's more speculation. We now see. The writes happening to the uh, to the uh, capacity tier, so he yeah. has to use some CPU here, and it's not much. I would say that these are the is maybe the tiering uh, the, the 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 calculation of the double parity. It's, this it's is the all it's all it's, it's all very very within yeah. reason so now, and expectations. Yeah, look, it's now done. the copy is done and nothing is happening here. No, nope. there's no online tiering going on. Interesting. Should I start the fourth copy pr process? Sure, give it, give it, a, give, give it a spin. I do another fifty gig, and they go to the 
to the capacity tier. Because, right. Because uh, uh, the the performance tier is full, I was I would guess. He's preferring guess. the performance tier. Let let me speculate. So I would say he's preferring the mirror tier because it's maybe not so heavy workload and it's faster. Yeah. And if it's filled up, he uses a capacity tier, and there he has to uh, he has to uh, do the uh, double parity. So yeah, but but if if I think back to the previous version of Windows, that would be a scheduled task that would do the tiering, right? Yeah, but uh, for for, N, for NTFS. Yeah, and so we can look for that. There is in the task scheduler. I know I know there is a blog post on creating a, a storage tier, and I think it's also a. A multi-tiered one on 2012 R2, so maybe it's just behaving as it as it behaves I think, earlier. I think so, yeah. And, so, the, and the new and the new capability is only so we've got a custom trigger. Yeah. That's normal. This and one. We, we looked at this before, and when we had only ReFS, uh, the that was disabled. Yeah, the storage tier optimization. This is a task that is also in 2012 R2. Yeah. Uh, where where we can have uh, an SSD tier and an, and an HDD tier, and the tiering takes place once a day at one o'clock uh, in the morning, and you can you can do tiering every six hours with 2012 R2, but you don't is, you shouldn't yeah. do it more often. And this but is every four hours. It this seems, is right? every four yeah. hours. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and and I, wait, if this one is 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 finished, let's kick this one off manually. We and will do that. Yeah. Yeah, and then we could try another one, and we could see it goes to the performance tier again. Yeah, the question is, there is a heat map involved in 2012 R2, so <laughs> will our blocks be cold now that are in hmm. the SSD tier? Are they hot or are they cold? And it only think... moves, moves blocks from the performance tier to the capacity tier if they are colder. You know, uh, we're going to kick off that... We do job as soon as this one is finished or we okay. could kick it off now no let's finish it otherwise we don't see anything right so if, it, is... if it starts tearing you still you if it starts let's say tearing to the to the capacity tier you should see something you should see reads on the yeah. on the ntfs volume oh, probably at the cost of the throughput of course yeah but we should wait. You're right, because otherwise we don't have a valid comparison with the other with the other jobs. So, with the seconds, it was it was not too slow. Actually, it 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 looks better than you would imagine. Yes, it's nearly the performance. No, it's it's better performance. Could it be? It's a little bit less than the performance of our ReFS because the last copy of the 32 gigabytes was faster than with ReFS. There we had over 200 seconds and here we have yeah. only 166. Yeah. So uh, because maybe uh, the, the, the online tiering doesn't take place. That could be. It doesn't intervene. Yeah. It's now yeah. Uh, everything is written to the capacity volume. Yeah, without any anything else happening. Yeah. So. So what is the conclusion of that? So if we would have for a backup target, the question is how to size the SSD part, the SSD tier. Yeah. Because so if you. Yeah. yeah? Go on, Didier. To me, if, whether you use REFS, and I would prefer REFS for the benefits you get from Veeam. And we'll put a we'll, we'd better put a link to to the to the Veeam blog on what they're doing, what the yeah. what the benefits are, capacity wise, speed wise. Uh, so I would prefer prefer REFS, but let's say I can't because I don't have a, an REFS target with a Windows Server 2016 uh, server. I'm stuck on 2012 R2 for some reason. Mm -hmm. Then then you still have, of course, uh, could we? Could yeah. Just size the SSD tier large enough to to take in your delta, your daily delta, and perhaps take a safety margin of twenty five percent. Yeah. 
and, and you might ha ha get the best possible performance both with RUFS because the real-time tiering wouldn't kick in and wouldn't intervene with the speed and with NTFS you give the the four hourly scheduled job the time to tear for you until your next big uh, delta arrives on the target, yeah, something we, like that. We have to look in, into that, but uh, imagine uh, Veeam and also DPM is using uh, the new DPM 2016, uses uh, ReFS for the data, uh, so they leverage also the advantages there. Um, but if you do a change block track, and you only back up the blocks that changed on your system, you maybe don't have so much data. If you have a SSD tier, for example, with maybe four terabytes of SSDs, and mm -hmm. you have a three-way mirror, you would have 1.2 terabytes. You can write a lot of backup to that. So we're now finished, and it immediately stops writing to the tiers. Yeah. Let's kick off that job. We kick off the job. Let's see where is it. It's somewhere here. So we do that. Run. Oh, we see it's it's at least it was it's calculating. Oh, that's it's, nice. It's yep. Look, look, so look, it's look, look. reading from the capacity tier and writing into the performance tier. That's Which the other cool. way around. Which is cool. Which is it is cool? cool? No, it should do it the other way around. It <laughs> Which means it's cool. It's, co it's cool to witness. And maybe is, now is it, it done? Uh, is it done already? No. No, it should copy data from the capacity tier that is hotter than yeah, the data yeah, yeah, in yeah, the I performance know, know, tier, and the other kind way of around. Cool. It was kind of cool to see that yeah. happen, but now it's running. It's still running. Maybe it's calculating or so, or maybe it's it has written the uh, read the, the 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 heat map or so. Where yeah, you, it is. you 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 mentioned something about the heat map, right? So the question is here: Is it going to kick in, or do we have to wait? Yeah. What when when is data considered cold? Uh, good question. If it's not used so much than other data, so uh, yes, I, that's, I imagine that's a the very heat map. That's a very open statement. <laughs> yeah, of course. I imagine the heat map like uh, every block has a number, uh, a number to it. So how hot it is, and imagine a block that is written one thousand time in in four hours. It's yeah. hotter than a block that is written written or or, or read ten times in four hours. Yeah. So they have different. I think they have a number how hot this block is and or how cold, and then the 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 blocks that are hotter and are not in the SSDs are moved to SSD, and of course they have to make place in the SSD tier for data that is hotter. So they have to move colder blocks to the HDDs. So it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a moving of data between the tiers in 2012 or two. But here nothing is happening now, right? Yes. So it could be that the data is just considered hot. Yeah. Oh, this but, data is there is no no cold data here. Can, can can you refresh the job? Maybe it's already stopped because style schedule that. isn't always the best at you know uh, just just see, just F5. move between another job or something. Yeah, it's done. Yeah, we can run it again. You see, there is something going on. Yeah, a little bit, and it's it's ready. It, okay, it's over. Yeah. So, so it's 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 looking and it's thinking nothing to see here nothing to do here. Yeah. Come back another time. Yeah, do it in 4 hours again. So yeah. So but that that 4 hours might give us an indication about when data is considered cold. Yeah. I don't know. So here we have we have done our test before but we didn't kick off all three jobs at the same time so the 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 data may vary but we had also seven 77 seconds in both scenarios at the first time and then we had 122 125 202 so the 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 tendency is the same right yeah and here we have i can do a sum let me see if i can sum yes. them up sum them uh, up. <laughs> it's nice divided let's see wait this is equal this there's a sum button on your I know, but I can. I'm. I'm so. In in German, it's Summe. 
some. <laughs> yes, so there I go. can do that. So here we have nine, uh, 392. It was faster. This, oh no, what, more seconds. We had more seconds. These are the seconds, the uh, sum in yeah. seconds. Well, no, the megabytes per second. So this was faster. No, no, wait a minute. These are the, the seconds, right? Seven oh, these are the seconds. You are completely yeah, yeah. correct. So we have to compare these two. This and this. This is almost equal. Almost equal. Here we have, here we have a huge difference. Yeah. And here we have also a huge difference. So, but the tendency is the same, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, I'm quite happy what I see. Yeah. And I will, maybe we we'll take another copy of the big data into, into our volume. Let's see. And... If it's consistent, the data would go to the capacity. Yeah. So I would say the NTFS stuff is still leveraging uh, the how would you the, the timed tiering like yeah. every four yeah. hours. Yeah. It, and it, it behaves. Data. Yeah, and, and it behaves like some of the classical sands. The yeah. moment your primary tier is full, you start writing to the to the secondary uh, yeah. tier. So yeah. this is this is not not that uh, not that abnormal, but it does prove that uh, with REFS it works in a completely different way. Yeah. So should we uh, kick off another REFS? You can always do that. Yeah, with file integrity. So yeah. let's do that in parallel and let's add the counters, huh? Yeah. Only to see if we have the online tiering going on. And my bet is we will. So this is the with file integrity. It's an IB thing, yep. I assume. So we have uh, to yep. widen this a bit, a bit more. So and let's yeah, do this one. Yeah. Oh, I can't start it because uh, the other one is still running. <laughs> so we have to stop this one. I stop it. There's still some data copied. No, this is still running. The measurement is stopped. So yeah, I just can... just just open a second. Uh, just no. open a second uh, Windows for PowerShell. No, we don't have to. I I stopped the measurement, but okay. the, the job is still running. You see here that both jobs, okay. both jobs. Yeah. So now we see here data is going again <laughs> to our performance tier in the ReFS volume. Yes. Yeah, and uh, it has destaged a bit, so. It can consume our writes, and I think after a while we will see the destaging happening happening to the capacity tier, right? Probably, Probably. unless Probably. it was already completely empty. How many? What? How much 50, are you copying? 50 gig. One. 50, 50 gig. gig. So it's a hundred gig. So it's it's destaging. No, it's, it's destaging. Hey, so it wasn't completely empty. I don't think it will completely empty the the thing, yeah. Yeah. because um, if this data is used, it would be nice if it's in SSDs, right? Normally so, your um, tiering is, uh, the, the, the performance tier is for for the that you can fast use the data. Yeah, or? back up and restore, right? That's the, that's the use case. So what was that? It started it started destaging again at around 25, 20%. 20 yeah. So that's about 20 25 20 to 25 gigs so that's about 20 percent or 25 percent of the of the capacity of the performance tier no no it's not uh, it's 20 percent of 50 gigs so that would be oh yeah sure 10 yeah, sorry right? 10 yeah 10 so it has room for 10 gig maybe this is a 60 percent that it, it destaged until 60 percent and then it finished mm-hmm and uh, then we put some data in it, and it started to destaging after. Oh, it should it should be more than the sixty percent. We it's know. Not we, we never know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe one day we'll get a table that says yeah. how it behaves. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So I think this was quite impressive, huh? Yeah, I think so. This was a fun thing to do. Yeah. So do you want? Uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll send you the links to the to the extra information on the blog post so people yeah. have something to read up on because this is very nice for the geeky for the geeky viewers. Perhaps some viewers still need to 
to read up on why we are so interested in this scenario and what Arivas can do for us. Yeah. And, uh, it would be helpful for them to have some background information. Okay. But this is kind of cool. Yeah. Okay, Didier. Uh, let's wrap it up. Wrap, wrap yeah. this up. Uh, it was a long day. Uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to our next uh, um, next Hyper V Amigo showcast, my friend. And we see, yeah. uh, we see each other next week, right? Normally we should. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will stop the recording now. Bye bye. Bye bye.